I'm Suzanne Flynn. I'm the Adult Programming Librarian here at the Downtown Library. And I'm Nick Butler, the uh, lead for the Reader's Advisory Department. And today I thought maybe it would be fun to, let's say, if you were trapped at home for a month, unable to go anywhere, uh, what would you have to read? What books would you want in your house if you were trapped at home for a month, four weeks? So we each picked three. Uh, Mick, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I'll go first. Uh, and again, we did this solely based on what we could find here at the library at the moment. Yes. So after the first 20 or 30 of my selections that were all checked out or I already had checked out at home. You're just too popular. Uh, I came uh, down to these three. Um, the first, Hallucinations by Oliver Sacks. He was the famous uh, neurologist that wrote Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, one of my favorite books of all time. And in this one, um, he discussed not only patients, but his, uh, his own sort of mind-altering experiences. And he always discusses the neurological background to everything, but in a very reachable way, talking about examples, human examples. Have you read it before? No. 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 It's on my list. Like ah. I said, these are, none of these have I read. They are on my list. Um, the next is the Patrick Melrose novels. This is a collection of four novels about the character Patrick Melrose by Edward Saint Abin. Uh, it combines Nevermind, Bad News, Some Hope, and Mother's Milk, all four. Um, I've always wanted to read these, um, and I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know much about them yet, but I want to read this. The other Possible is the story of painting by Sister Wendy Beckett. Oh, I love Sister Wendy. I know. Who does not love Sister Wendy? She was a uh, famous art historian, and I picked mine based on spending long hours just really getting into something. And I love art, don't know much about it, and so um, she's a good place to start. She's very approachable. See, what I think is interesting is all of yours are books on your to-be-read pile, whereas at the thought of being trapped in my house for a month <laughs> with, with only three books, I went the other way, and I chose some old favorites. Um, so for my books, I chose The Cold Dish by Craig Johnson. Uh, it's the first in the Walt Longmire series. You might remember in the first episode, I had a Craig Johnson book. But if I'm trapped at home for a month, with these three, with three books to read, um, I could read this one over and over again. It's really good, so I, I chose that one. Um, I chose, this is actually like book nine, I think, of 11 or 12 now. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's, it's 12. Of the Mercedes Thompson series by Patricia Briggs, Fire Touched. Now, I have read this series who knows how many times. I reread it at least once a year whenever she re releases a new book. And sometimes when I'm feeling down, I just go ahead and I read it again anyway. This book in particular, so we have a long one in this series. Sometimes it starts to drag because you, you run out of steam and you sort of, the characters have gotten together. They, you know, have conquered this, that, and the other. This book really changes things. It ties in to what happened in the Alpha and Omega series, which is a companion side series to the Mercedes Thompson books. And it completely sets up a new major plot line for the series. It's very exciting, and it's my favorite book. And then for my final book, The Blue Sword by Robin Technically, this is book two, uh, though it was published first, a prequel was written later. It is a fantasy novel set in a, a desert, and there's a girl by the name of Harry Crew, her full name is Engahard, and she goes on a quest, I guess is the best way to put it. It is fantastic. I actually own three copies of this at my house. I have one really decrepit copy that I have totally destroyed because I've read it so many times. I have one copy that looks like this, and then I have another pristine copy with cover art on it that I really, really like, and so I keep that one special and I read the other two. <laughs> oh, no, we're not upset. No, no, no. This is one of my favorite 
favorite books. And so if I'm trapped and I have three books to read, I pick these because I can reread them over and over again, oh. and they don't get old. That is a different take. It is. I'm, I'm a big rereader. Well, I, I, I do on occasion, but I was thinking about after we decided to do this, when I have a situation, and that's when I get there in, in the past. If I go there for a long period of time, I go to offer for my people, or Louise Penny. Even though Louise Penny and the mystery, you would think, kind of remembering how it's ended, but with good books, it's the beating is almost as good as the actual good one. So, pretty interesting take. I don't want to reread something. So I'm stuck. For me, it's like being with old friends. Mm-hmm. And so, I have a really good suspension of disbelief, so I just forget what's going to happen later in the book, and I go on this journey with these characters that I love. And so, it's, it's a constant. I also read very quickly. And so, if I'm going to be stuck for four weeks, I'm going to have to read these books again. What if I don't like them? What if I, I get one, it's a new book, I've never read it, and I don't like it, and I'm <laughs> stuck with it for a month? I don't know one second. If I'm stressed, you know, they're just... Uh, imaginary having to stay home. Oh, yeah. We don't know anything about that. If all. stress is involved, for some reason, it's not comforting to me. I, I cannot trick myself with it. I want to learn something. So that's what I tend to read more not. I'm not sure it's a or an author that I've heard so much about. I think it's pretty good. Cool. And so they would do educational programs, and Sister Wendy was one of them. So Mom and I would watch this thing. I just like the way she describes art in a way that I can explain it, not in my own And then it gets into nothing to tell me what I am doing. Use that for the next point. She was always very good at making art very accessible. And she's still very, she knows what she's talking about. She knows the technical stuff. Right. But she's, she's very, very easy to, to understand. Right. So, that's really cool. so what should we talk about next week? I don't know. Maybe somebody could give us some comments, ask some questions on YouTube or on the Facebook post that, that links to this. Maybe if they have any questions about books or the library or anything, maybe we could answer some of those. Just let us know in the comment section and we'll be happy to answer. Okay, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it.